Assalamu alaikum. This is Nadir Shah in Chicago, and you are watching my channel, Knowledge for Quality of Life. Friends, I have a request to all of you that whatever I am going to share here, share this information and knowledge with all of your friends, families, relatives, and all your loved ones. And be part of this mission along with me in sharing this knowledge so that we can improve people's quality of life. Before I get into the topic, I want to tell you a story which is my personal life. 1989, when I started working in 1989 as a civil servant, so I used to do my annual physical. Annual physical, when we have blood work, so that blood work Every year I used to get that blood work done, which have standard, I would say, test. One of the component of the test was standard lipid panel. Cholesterol is in the rota. You have total cholesterol, triglycerides, LDL, HDL. Now, LDL stands for low density lipoprotein or hdl stands for high density lipoproteins so called bad cholesterol or good cholesterol jisko aam misnomer diya gaya hai mera har cheez jo hai wo sahi tha everything was okay by my doctor but my hdl has always been low how low basically 27 this was in 1989, 27. Now for male, the HDL, the lower bound is minimum 40. You have to be above 40. And for females, it should be above 50. Now, every year I used to discuss this thing with my doctor that why my HDL is low. And he would say that, you know, do this thing, do that thing. For instance, he asked me to join the exercise, uh, eat, start eating wild caught salmon, um, and then leafy green vegetables. I did everything, whatever he asked me to do. In 1989 to 1993, I have done everything in my power to improve that number from 27 to 33, and it won't budge. Beyond that, it won't go any higher. So basically, in 1994, when I had a discussion again during the annual physical with my doctor, and my doctor said that, Nadir, maybe you are wired genetically that way. And then he started asking about my parents. So I said that I don't have any data on my father because he never saw a doctor in his life and he didn't know what a pill is. He never took a pill. And then he asked me, how long did he live? And I said, he lived 102 and he died while sleeping. So then he asked me about my mom and my mom, I said that she is 90. And then my doctor says that, Nadir, why are you worried? You have good genes. You are blessed. And I said to my doctor that I'm not worried about life or death. I'm worried about this HDL, which is one of the good parameters for good quality of life. And if we know all that this HDL is the one which brings unused cholesterol, which is LDL after the cells use it, brings back to the liver for recycling. And it gets out of the system through our body in the form of waste. So I said that, you know, it's it's in in, in a in an analytical form, in an analogy form, that this thing would flush out things, means it was doing a sweeping job. So if my HDA was low, it means that cleaning was not done properly. And that was my, you know, concern. So basically, he just washed his hand and he said that, you know, Maybe you are wired genetically, you can't do much about it. You have done whatever I asked you to do, and that's it. And 
fast forward from 1994. So I mentally prepared myself that, you know, maybe that that's that's in my luck, you know, that's that's how I am. And but my my inquiry question mind is always being asking that it's, it's got to be something. It has to be a, some reason for that. Uh, either it's it's not moving up for a certain reason, and why it's that way. And I've been questioning in the back of my mind all the time. From 1994, fast forward, to 2016, November. It's been a long time, and this thing was always in the back of my mind. And I was doing, during my lunch hour, some study on the National Institute of Health publication database, which we call NIH, PubMed. And a paper came across, and it was like light bulb went on. And the title of the paper was that, you know, it's your vitamin D, which normalizes your lipids. It means that vitamin D plays a very crucial role in normalizing your cholesterols. So I read the paper a few times because, you know, I have an engineering background, but I have a basic science background. And to understand the, how the system works, how the body works, it's not a rocket science. So then I asked my doctor, I called the doctor. I said that, doctor, you never gave me a test as part of my annual physical, which we call vitamin D test. And the chemical name is 25 hydroxy test. And he, all of a sudden he said that, you know, why you are interested in this? Why do you need it? I said, this is my doubt that I'm going to be low in this. And we started arguing about it. And I said that, let's get the test done. And then we can talk about it, whether I'm low or not. So I pushed him to get the referral. So he faxed me the referral. I went to next day to the clinic and lab and got my test done. Third days later, three days later, third day I got the notification from the doctor. Doctor calls me and doctor says, Nadir, you are right. You were right that your B is deficient. I said, by that time, in three days, I was reading like, a, you know, aggressive person and I was trying to find out that if I'm low, how I'm going to fix it, what what do I need to do and all those things. You know, I've, I've been, you know, reading up to two, three o'clock in the morning and, and my wife sometimes used to get frustrated. That what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to find some answers. So once I found that I was 20.4 nanograms per milliliter, which is below the 30. So the range of vitamin D is 30 milligrams per milliliter to 100. That's the range, quite a huge range. So I was 20.4. And doctor tells me that you can take 600 IU of vitamin D and you should be okay. And I knew because I read it, it's not going to be okay. And so I said that, that's good enough, you know, I just needed to know my number and I know what to do now. So I started next day, two, three days later, I got the vitamin D supplement and I started dosing it. As a first dose, I tried 2000 IU. Now I started taking daily for three months. Because based on my reading, it, 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 I found out that, you know, your vitamin D level after you start the first dose, it plateaus at 12 weeks, which is three months. And then I get tested again. So with 2000 IU, my vitamin D moved from 20.4 to 44. Okay. So I did a little math since I have a background of engineering, so for each 100 IU, how much I gained. I used the unitary method, and I calculated that for each 100 IU, how much I gained in nanograms per milliliter. And then I said that I want to be a target at 60. 
instead of 44, my target was 60 and above. So how much I need to calibrate my dose? My dose came 5,000 IU. So I started taking again 5,000 IU for three months, another three months, because that 5,000 will plateau after 12 weeks, which is three months. So I got tested again. I went for the test and I got 64. I said, perfect. That's what I was targeting above 60. So it, it, it gave me an idea that how you move you know, with this vitamin D. Now, my objective was not to just raise the vitamin D at this point. My objective was to improve my HDL. So I started, while I was doing this exercise of increasing my vitamin D, I was reading experts. Uh, first expert I came across, world-renowned expert cardiologist, Dr. William Davis, who wrote a book, a couple of books, and you know, he stationed at that time in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and he said that, you know, when you take your vitamin D to 60 and above, your HDA is not going to improve dramatically right away, overnight. You have to give at least about a year and a half or two years, and then you will see your D HDL is going to move slowly and gradually. And of course, you know, vitamin D was a basic premise, but you have to do certain things with it, uh, like avoiding the refined carbs and sugar, which I was doing it. Uh, so my vitamin D with the 64, I was holding it, and then my HDL started moving from, remember that I was locked in in 93 at 33. It moved from 27 to 33, and then it just got locked in. So after 33, it went to 38, then 44, then 48, then 52, then 58. The most recent I got last year was 60. That's close to 120%, over 120% jump from my basic level. Okay? So it's a huge you know, game changer. And that was something for me that it shook me completely in healthcare that how our body is made up of. And, and then I was vividly reading things day in and out. So my I have a background in engineering and I was reading for the last, I've been reading healthcare related stuff for the last eight years and and I'm at this, this point that I'm trying to share whatever I have come across and some, some things which I'm going to be sharing here is going to be mind-boggling that we normally don't hear from the doctors. And, and to be honest with you, this, this vitamin D thing, whatever new advancement and research and development happened, it's in the last 10 to 12 years or more, a little bit. Not, not 20 years or 30 years or 40 years, even though vitamin D was invented actually in 20s, 1920s. And all we knew so far before 20, 12 years that vitamin D protects you, you know, from rickets, which is the curving of the bones. So it, it, it just considered as a, bone vitamin, but what I have read so far, that it does much more than the bone health, much, much more. Each and every cell in our body gets impacted by vitamin D because it's not a vitamin, it's a hormone. It's a, we'll take it a deeper dive in the next vlogs. But I wanted to share you here something. Let me share my screen. You see this chart here, that was a paper I came across. And this is a, I don't want to share the entire technical paper because it's a lot of mumble jumble science and I don't want to confuse people. I want, as we, as we hear that, you know, picture speaks thousand words. So I said that, you know, let me take the condensed information in one chart and share with you guys. 
So if you see these four charts here, the first one here where my cursor is, is the relationship between triglyceride and vitamin D. The second one on the right side top is total cholesterol with vitamin D. And the third one and the left, bottom left, is your low density lipoprotein, which is LDLC cholesterol with vitamin D. And then on the right bottom is your high density lipoprotein, which is HDL, which is which I was targeting to improve, is related to vitamin D. Now, if you look at the these three charts, the top two and the bottom left, all has negative slope. The folks who have a little bit statistics background, and it shows here in the R. You see that R is negative. Here R is negative. Here R is negative, along with the P values. So all these negatives shows that you know these three slopes are negative. It means if you increase your vitamin D, your triglycerides are going to improve or it's going to lower for the betterment. If you increase your vitamin D, your total cholesterol will go down as well. If you increase your vitamin D, your LDL will go down, right? So this is basically what we call inverse relation. It means you increase one, the other one decreases and vice versa. But when you look at the HDL, it has a positive correlation. Our value is 0.33. So it means that, you know, this thing was the trigger point which alerted me that, you know, my vitamin D because my HDL was not budging up. And sure enough, mine is 64 and I improved my vitamin D and in doing so, my HDL started going up. So I wanted to share this thing with you that where I'm coming from. So this is this is the pure science. This is basic science. And, and, and the way we look at it, that you know how body is wired, that everything is working, you know, in, in, in sync. It, it's not isolated. Everything is working in, in a sync. So let me sh stop share screen here. And I will include in the description uh, 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 an article as well. So people who wants to know a little bit more and take a deeper dive, they can view it. And uh, if you have any particular question related to my life, my story, as I said that I'm not here to recommend or give any advice for any individual. But if somebody has a question about me, my story, my concerns, or my life, they can put in the comment box and I will try to answer. Hopefully we will take into the next week out a deeper dive on this subject that what it is actually, what is vitamin D? Is it really necessary? Or is it really that important? And why is it important and how we can fix it? See you then.